It is Wednesday of the 13th week of Ordinary Time. We reflect on the pain of separation. Maybe to point it out, something that can really give us a picture of what we are going to talk about is on uh, the winning process. All of us, we went through a winning experience of which we may not know what it was because maybe we were still too young to understand. But uh, we find that winning is done to create independence of a young baby from the mother. In other words, a young kid starts to feed on other foodstuff from the mother's milk. This is done because as an independent human person growing up, the kid has to be helped to live alone. This is done to help this little one to develop the independence of coping with life without the mother. This separation, when it's done, it's not the best experience per se, as it will be in other cases, if you look when you want to have things work out, we have to talk about separating powers, people, you know, for the sake of effectiveness. And what we can talk about uh, powers, and especially what we find in the scriptures today, we read from the book of Genesis chapter 21, verse 5, then 8 to 20. Here we find of the story of Abraham now is a hundred. And he has Isaac as his newborn with the blessing of a newborn baby who gets to grow to be independent. Sarah notes that they are getting to be familiar with the son of Aga, the Egyptian slave. As a mother or as a woman, she sensed some trouble in the future. So she goes to the husband and says, send this slave woman away. Abraham get displeased for he knew this son who is being sent away with the mother was his blood. In his distress the Lord comes to him saying, listen to Sarah send the mother and the child away. He wakes up in the morning prepares bread and the skin of water and he sets them free. Humanly speaking, this was not easy, especially what he had to subject to this young boy but because of the future trouble that may emerge, he had to do it. The challenge goes on as we read that 
Aga reaches on a dry land. The water is finished. She is with the little one. Left to die. She goes, puts the baby and they push. Because she could not afford to look her own child again. Be separated from her by death. But God had her. And she was directed to a well where she went and fetched water for her son with God promising that he's going to make her son a great nation. Thus, separation at any level is not something that anyone can easily welcome. But if you look at the long term, why this separation is necessary, then we can appreciate it. Let's see what we find in the gospel of today that comes from Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 to 34. Christ is met by two demoniac. And they ask him, what do you have to do with the Son of God? They know who Christ is. He has come to the territory no one will dare pass. And they request that they should not be sent away. They requested to be sent to the swine. And Christ said, go. They went and entered the swine and all were driven to the sea. The headsmen ran to report to the city what they saw. When all people came, they pegged Christ to leave their city. Again, look, Christ is trying to separate the devil from inflicting pain to humanity. But the consequences of it affect the people and now they want them to be separated from Christ. They are not comfortable having Him with them. They didn't understand why He did what He did. Therefore, again, separation is something we need to stop and ask, what does it mean? How do we accept the pain that comes with it? And here is a way we can easily deal with this pain of separation. Number one, we need to be ready to overcome a challenge. A challenge in life is an obstacle that uh, at one point we have to lose for us to gain. As a baby, we'll only find its independence after learning to feed by itself or depend on other foodstuff than the milk of the mother. Unless this is done, unless especially the mother intends it, there is no way we can talk about the independence of the young kid. Maybe also when we talk about uh, in living some habits that uh, can always lead us to dependence, Unless we appreciate the need to be independent and sometimes alone to do what is right or to do what no one else expects, there is no way, again, we can talk about being ourselves. So that is very key. We need to talk about how ready are we to overcome Life challenges. Number two, we have to talk about separation that brings division. In business, we talk about division of labor. 
That means a process of having people doing what they are well conversant with for the best production. Therefore, when we talk about celebration at end time of life, it's when we are geared for the best results. We need to talk about what kind of habits do we need to shed off? What kind of people do we need to move away from? What kind of thoughts should we not entertain if we have to talk about great production? So, we need to accept that separation for us to deliver our best. And uh, this leads to number three, marking territories. What we talk about uh, personal space. You know, when we talk about personal space, what we need to realize is that where our space reaches, the space of the other person starts. So, there is no way we would wish to extend our space to overreach or to assume that the other person doesn't deserve the same. Now, why are boundaries very important in our lives? They help us shape our thoughts. They help us focus in our action. They help us avoid corriding. When you know that this is what I'm supposed to do, then you are able to do it. That takes into account the space of others. When you get this discipline into your system, then you find that you will align all your actions. That is number four. Alignment, that means you have all that you need to do focused on the same goals or getting to work with people who have the same goals. Yes, there will be yes, division of labor, there will be territories, there will be challenges, but these challenges are going to be overcome because everything we are doing is geared. We have a common ground of carrying out our action. And this is why then we want to talk about, if we look at the case of Abraham, what was to be his reason for alignment of what he did? It's because he had to secure Isaac and his future. He had no other ways. What was the cause of alignment with Christ and the demoniac? It was to set the people free from the power of this devil. The alignment we experience with Christ when he meets the demoniac is to sweep them away. To get them out of his way. But this was not what maybe the people from the city expected. Because for them, they saw the loss they had to incur. But they didn't see why they need to have a clear focus. And that's why they found it difficult to understand Christ. And the best they will do is to ask them to move away. So today, when we talk about aligning our lives, we need to focus on how to overcome challenges by separating or dividing our actions, marking territories for us to reach the goals we set. And let our goals today be doing the will of God. Let us be ready to lose everything. Let us accept to be separated from everyone and everything for us to remain connected with our Creator. And if we find these coming our way, then we can talk about our life is aligned to our God. May God grant us this grace to achieve this greatness. Peace.